So, as I said, we ended up going down the energy efficiency route and tried to, to, to make the performance of the building uh, much better than, uh, than the building standards of, uh, at the moment. Um, and people in UCL were much more clued up uh, to how, how um, building standards are evolving, think that the house reflects the um, energy standards of 2013 rather than uh, 2008 and feel that it will probably be of the code, code 3, code 4 standard. So we've got, we've got much better thermal uh, performance in, in the ins levels of insulation. We have got uh, good uh, heating systems. We've also got solar thermal as well as so solar PV. So we've got some element of, of, of renewables and uh, heat exchange ventilation. And that has pushed us beyond uh, what is required by building regulations. As part of the project, we also considered a wide range of, of technologies from vacuum secondary glazing, which is a really lovely product, which uh, will give us the opportunity at some future date to, to make windows and perhaps retrofit existing windows with, uh, with gl uh, high performance glass simply because it's so, so thin. Didn't really have the opportunity to, to, to use it in, in this um, building in 17th and Augustine's Road because of safety issues because at the moment it can't be toughened uh, but it's a material to look out for in the future. We looked at rain and water harvesting, didn't couldn't get uh, diggers in to do it um, because access is, into, is an issue for this building. And similarly, because of access, we couldn't really look at ground source heat pumps. So some of the technologies that, that, that uh, people would favor to retain the existing buildings to make effectively um, energy, heating energy for the house emissions free aren't really tenable and are very site specific. Um, we also look at overcladding, which surprisingly for me was, was uh, an, something that both the heritage people and uh, the energy people agreed on. The heritage people because it protected the fabric, the energy people because it makes um, it much more, more a coherent um, solution uh, and doesn't has less risk of, of thermal bridging, which would be great for, for us as a local authority because one of the issues would be with thermal bridging is that we have damp and mold growth, which is a bane of, um, of sh social housing. Depending on your solution that, that you choose in refurbishing a house, you get a different uh, improvement or different reduction in energy efficiency. And this, this slide shows um, some of the different solutions. We start off with, uh, with uh, 20 tons of carbon dioxide, which is what we estimate was the, for the house uh, at the start. And then we start to look at what, uh, what at the basic measures um, that, would, that a local authority would often do to a house. Things like, like um, draft proofing, insulating the loft, um, putting a new condensing boiler, and that would give you 20-25% reduction in, in carbon. We then look at what the, the um, conservation surveyors would have advised us to do to retain the heritage value and improve uh, energy um, consumption. And that would give us um, over 70% re reduction. Now this is actually very drastic work. It involves blocking off all the chimneys, uh, insulating the, the um, chimney cavities, um, draft proofing uh, down to really low levels, thick insulation uh, in the roof, and solar thermal, I think. Um, the only thing it didn't really touch was, w was the um, insulating the walls. 
and the limit of that is about 70% reduction in energy. If we did things to meet part L of the building re regulations, we'd probably achieve 75% um, carbon reduction. This would have entailed um, insulating the walls, double glazing, uh, insulating the, the loft, um, advanced boilers, um, and would have been what would have happened to the house um, had, it, had it been refurbished norm, uh, normally. This is because uh, it is actually a change of use. We're changing from two flats to one building and it comes under the building reg regulations. Um, that is of course assuming that the um, contractors will be able to build to building regulations, which of course is uh, difficult even for new build. Uh, let alone refurbishment. Now we come to 17th St. Augustine's Road, which is uh, highly insulated. We've, we've upped the insulation, we've double glazed it, and we come down to about 80%, uh, sorry, 80%, nearly 80% carbon reduction. Um, and what, what we've what, and what we've done to further reduce that is to address uh, electricity use, which is what the solar PV is for. And that brings it down to just over 81% carbon reduction. We can reduce, we looked a little bit further uh, for further reductions by, by improving the windows, but we found that uh, uh, quite a costly in investment in triple glazing had a marginal effect on, on uh, reducing emissions. So we've ra we found really that it we couldn't quite make that 90% we were going for to start with, but we've just made over 80%. 80, 80 Part of this is because we couldn't cram enough solar PV onto the roof. Um, this chart is quite, quite interesting because it shows that right at the start, um, we were, we, the heat losses were throughout the, the, the building. There was, there was over 200 pounds worth of heat loss through the walls, through the roof, um, through ventilation, and from the heating system. Um, now the, these figures of, are, are out of date because fuel costs have been going up so fast. Once we have uh, done the work, we find that most of the heat losses have been reduced to real, uh, really small numbers. The one big one is still ventilation, uh, which means that, which, which kind of makes it difficult for, uh, for us to, to achieve zero energy houses because uh, you need the, the, the air coming in to live. So that, that, that does pose, pose a limit to it. But it does show that at, at once you've done the insulation, once you've done the, um, the uh, new boiler, it's really down to the ventilation, which is very difficult to do, um, especially for builders uh, who are at the moment aren't used to building to low ventilation standards. Now, all this, of course, cost, costs money, and this table gives you an idea of how much the work on the energy efficiency side of 17th and Augustine's Road is costing. Um, at the top is solar PV, which will cost about £25,000, and gives just over a, a tonne of carbon savings. Um, this compares to, to roof insulation costing £6,000, uh, giving three tonnes of carbon dioxide. That, it shows you that there are th cheap things to pick on uh, that will get the emissions down uh, quite early on. But if you're going to try to get that 80% target, you've got to start putting in serious money.